Hello everybody, so today we're going to do flowers, more like a Georgia O'Keeffe experience than actually doing botanical painting or painting a vase of flowers. I just want you to enjoy their colour and enjoy wet and wet technique because that's a lot of what we're going to do. So today we're doing a poppy, a rose and a lily. Um, so I'm going to do them one by one and I might have to uh, wait for bits to dry but let's see how it goes. This is my kit. I've got various brushes here. I've got a couple of Chinese type ones um, and big uh, round brushes as well. Um, this is a size 12, I think, maybe. See why it's very nice. And then I've got my paints. Again, I'm using tube watercolors. Uh, I don't know if you can see. So these are <coughs> lots of very vivid reds and I'm going to be using a lot of it because I want to paint this very vibrant poppy. And I've got some few other colors I'm going to use here, such as Payne's Gray and some of my greens. So I've got a few examples here of a few of what I've done before. Uh, so this is the poppy. You can see how vivid that is. And it is in a George O'Keeffe kind of style. I could actually paint the background with this and it would probably ping up. But I may do that later. Here's a little lily. I was just practicing it and looking at uh, the way the petals form. And here is a rose. Uh, so it's kind of misty, but I like that uh, when I'm doing flowers. And here's a more finished version, which is upside down. Well, I don't know which way should up should it be. Um, and you can see here I've used a lot of wet and wet technique and again, nice vivid colours. Quite a nice thing to do with watercolours, and this is a principle of watercolours, you paint the lightest colour first. So here I put this colour here, this very light green there, and then I started adding darker colours to define the leaves. So we're probably going to do a bit of that as well. So let's crack on. And as I've got all my reds squeezed out, I think I'm going to do the poppy first. <coughs> and then we'll see how it goes. So I've got my picture of the poppy here and I will put it there. And I've just uh, used actually my watercolour crayons. Uh, I like the Caran d'Ache. Just to map out where I want things. If I persuade it to open. So here I'm going to use a red, because it is red, and actually look at uh, what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be completely free form, just a bit. So here, oh, where's my piece of paper? Oh, here it is. Here we go. <coughs> so here is my poppy. And I'm going to paint in the centre of this A3 piece of paper, and I don't have to use it all. So the centre is sort of off-centre, and then I've got some nice crinkly petals, crinkle, crinkle. And I'm not going to be too hidebound with the detail, I'm more or less using this as inspiration. So we've got these nice yellows here catching the light, and we've got this nice black in the middle. So we're down here and up here and it more or less goes off the picture. So a uh, trusty thing to have about your person is a sprayer. So in fact, because this is going to be completely wet in wet, I'm going to spray this piece of paper and it might bring up the pigment a bit. And I want it to be really quite damp. The other ones, not so much, but this particular painting, this will be very wet in wet. And of course I need some kitchen towel Put those there. And I'm going to use my big brush to pick up. Uh, this is actually Cadmium Red Scarlet. And I'm just going to start floating that on. You can see how intense it is. The Cadmiums uh, and the bright reds tend to be quite opaque. So I'm just going to go on there and put that on, petal by petal. Ooh, I suppose I could have my reference. And I think I might spray it again because I think it's going to dry too quickly. <coughs> Whoa, look at that. Whoa, doing all sorts of exciting things. <coughs> so I'm just going to go in there and paint uh, the bright red of the poppy. And I've got this slightly different colour. This is vermilion. And you can see that's really, really thick. And it's more like the, the lighter version of the reds, the nice orangey colours. So let's have a little bit more of that. And I don't want it to be too dilute. So I'm noticing this is getting quite dilute, so I just want that to be in there. So I'm just going to concentrate on these few petals. And then <coughs> I'm going to pick up a slightly smaller brush. And I'm going to use Elysian Crimson. 
this is from a tube and I'm just going to float that on to add some depth to the petal and you can see that it's the water is doing a lot of the work for me and I'm just going to go in there and add some more darkness over here for a few crinkles in me bobby. I've got another nice colour here. This is Quinacritone Magenta as well, which is nice. But if I can persuade it to work, it's turned into jelly on me. You can see, so that is a little bit more magenta -y. And you notice when you start using different pigments, they have different properties. So I'm noticing that sitting on there. But the Elysian Crimson has just disappeared into me petal. So I'm just going up here, and I think I might need another spray. <clears throat> what else have I got? Oh, this is Quinacridone Red, which I think uh, <clears throat> these are the new uh, paints invented by Daniel Smith, and they're quite transparent. And I'm afraid that might d dry a bit too light. And let's try a little bit of that. Oh, you can see that is a different colour, but let's not use that one. I'm picking up some more of my vermilion. I just want to go in there <clears throat> and enjoy painting this poppy. I might have a little bit of Payne's Grey. Let's see what that does. I just want a bit of shadow here and there. Maybe in the middle. No, I don't want it there. Let's go back to my Lysian Crimson and I want to get that deep, deep red. So this is kind of an exercise and in just enjoying red colours, which can be lovely. So here I've got, this is the Cadmium Scarlet again. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Yum, yum, yum. And of course it will dry. The trouble with painting wet and wet, and I'm just conscious that this might be drying on me, which <coughs> I'm going to spray it again. Whoa. It does all sorts of exciting things, as you can see. So I'm just going in there, and I want these some areas to be a bit darker, so I'm going to use this Elysian Crimson. Ooh, yum. And I'm just, whoops, splat. I'm just going in here. The paint was very sticky. I'm just going in here to get that darker edge. And it's not dark enough. Let's have a little bit, a little tiny bit of Payne's Grey in there. Whoa, that's not a little tiny bit. Let's have some more of that crimson on the go. Just to make it darker, because uh, looking at the structure of the poppy, you've got this almost plate in the middle of it, and it's darker in there. And I'm hoping <coughs> that over time, oh, I like that, uh, over time, that uh, the water will spread out most of these uh, areas of petals. Let me just get my bigger brush, because I really want to get all this lovely colour on. Now, I wonder what colour that was. This is, I think this is Old Holland, again, Cadmium Scarlet. Or Vermilion, one of them. And you see you get, so the water's doing a lot of work in there. But let's just keep going. So I'm going to pick up this cadmium again. You can see uh, this is actually proper cadmium and it's really dense. It really packs a punch. So I'm going around here. So this is quite wet. Ooh. And once I've got all the paint on there and I'm happy with it, I want to start adding a little bit more detail in the crinkle of the poppy. Uh, oh no, let's try that one. I don't think that's going to do anything. Ooh, that's the, this is the quinacridone colour and it's a bit transparent and it's having trouble fighting against this. I would, perhaps I'll take the petal down here. And I won't mind so much. So this is uh, painting really wet and wet so I'm just picking up a slightly smaller brush here. And I did like what that little bit of Payne's Grey did. So I might go in, and I'm just looking here, whoa, and put in my Payne's Grey again, more or less straight from the tube, to catch these kind of blobs that poppies have in the middle. And again, I don't want to get too hidebound in uh, the botanical detail. I'm just splooshing it on, sploosh, sploosh, sploosh. And I think I want a little bit more detail up here, whoa. Well, maybe too much. Let's throw some Elysian Crimson at that and see what happens. Whoa, look at that. You can see the paint reacting. And then I suppose you just have to embrace the fact you wanted it to do that. 
So this is a huge puddle of this wonderful uh, cadmium and it's creating these fantastic shapes. And again, but I do want to get me blobs on in me poppy. Sort of like that and then there's another one up here. Pure colour for that. And this is really wet and wet. And I think I need something going on there. So I'm going to see if I can persuade this Elysian Crimson to have some effect. So I'm going up here and trying to create kind of the idea of crinkles in the leaves and in the petals. And I don't know what it's going to look like when it dries. And look what's happened there. It's done all sorts of amazing things. Here, oh no, here it's dry. Oh no. So I'm just going to take some Elysian Crimson up there. <coughs> And it has actually dried here, considering how wet it was. It's quite amazing. Whoa! And the trick with watercolours is, don't fiddle. So here as well, I think I want some of well, that deeper, deeper red that I can create with Elysian Crimson. And I don't really want to mess around with my nice areas of grey I've got going on there. But I'm just sort of putting some more variations of red on here. <coughs> mm. And I think I might spray the edge of this just a little bit to see what happens. Whoa, look at that. Whoa, whoa, way. <laughs> yeah, I think that's mainly dry up there. <coughs> and again, I want some more Elysian Crimson in here to create that idea of depth. And I'm trying to avoid touching my grey bits because I know that will uh, ruin their integrity. So again, down here with a little tiny bit of Payne's Grey to look like a crinkle. Oh, I can tell you what else you can use as a tool. You can actually use your kitchen towel. So I might go in here, yeah, might I, and have a bit of a crinkle. Just with some kitchen towel to create some effects. And again, I don't know what it's going to look like when it's dry. I'm afraid it might dry a bit paler, so I just want the idea of a few little crinkles. Mm. And this is spread around a bit. It is looking a bit Georgia O'Keeffe now, which is good, which is the effect I was going for. And I'm just going to pick up my nice little Chinese brush, because it's got a good point, and pick up some of that Payne's Grey, and do a sort of abstract version of the centre. So it's got this nice shape in the centre which will become the seed head Woo. and then I might do something really weird and have a few little bits here less is more, less is more, I must listen to myself sometimes and then I think I might just put on, if I could find it, my little bit of salt here we go in the middle and then I'm going to wait for that to dry and you have to not mind it's all mushed around together but I'm just going to put a bit of salt on there to create some texture see what happens so I'm going to put that aside right, that it's hideously wet it's, I've got so many stains on my carpet I'm just going to dry off these edges because I know they're going to fall off once I start moving around my paper. And of course you can drip it all sorts of which ways. I could drip it that way or this way. But I think I want to leave it at the moment. So I'm just going to put that one aside. And then we're going to think about a rose. So now we're going to paint a rose. And when you start looking at roses, you can see that they have this nice spiral of petals. And rather than really try and do it do a botanical drawing. I really want to catch the idea of these nice petals coming out from the centre and they do go in a spiral. So again I'm going to use a, my watercolour crayons and I think I'm going to use this colour which is a kind of duller red um, and I'm just going to start, I am looking at my rose but I just want to think about the pattern of these petals. So they go round like that and you want to catch the edge because uh, as it goes down uh, into the flower, 
you get this nice depth of colour. And this is one of these lovely roses that change colour as they bloom. So I'm just trying to catch the edges of my petals. It's only for my own information really, and I just want to get that idea of a spiral and the nice crinkliness of these petals. And as they go out, they tend to be a paler and sort of whiter. So let's go like that. And in and out. Whoa, let's balance out my rose. Have another one there. And maybe one there. Oh no, now I need one here. So <coughs> I'm going to use um, this time I'm going to use a nice colour called Quinacridone uh, Red which is a nice glowing colour. This is one of the transparent ones. I'll just show you what it looks like. If I remember where it is, this is it. No, that's the crimson. I lie, I lie. So it's actually here. And it's got this very zingy pink to it. Can you see? It's a nice warm pink. So I'm going to primarily use that. And probably, primarily use my nice little Chinese brush because I like the point on it. And this, uh, again, is wet and wet, but I'm not wetting the paper first. What I'm going to do <coughs> is actually hope that kitchen towel will save my bacon. I'm not entirely sure if it will. <coughs> so, I want to mix up some of this. Whoa, wash. That should be all right. Oh, it's got a bit of grey in it, I think. Make sure it's all clean, because it's such a zingy colour. And really nice and warm. Um... Do I want to spray it? Now I'm going to paint first and then I might spray in a minute. So I want to get this really nice zingy colour. And the nice thing about using this Chinese brush is that it has um, a really nice point and you can vary your line. So I can press harder, make it deeper. And I'm actually not really following my pencil lines, but it's quite useful to have them there so you know what you're doing. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to soften that edge. And again, I'm going to go in here. Oops. And there. And softening these edges as I go round. So just with water, clean water, soften that edge. And <coughs> I tend not to paint flowers because I do find them awfully fiddly. But I do like doing it this way. This is almost like Chinese brush painting, becoming the essence of the flower. And you can see, so it's helpful that I've actually delineated where that petal is, so I can actually know where it is uh, before I start throwing paint at the thing. And then I'm softening that edge. And just soften that one. And then we go, we've got another one. Probably not want a bit more colour in there. So I'm dropping in the pure colour. And I'm going to soften that edge. And I'm going to go around here. And again, so I suppose while I'm putting this colour on, what I'm doing, I'm defining the edge of the previous petal. So leaving that bit white so it can be the petal. I might take that down a bit. And just adding some more water there. That's a little bit strong, but don't fiddle with watercolours. And as I go round, me rose softening the edges as I go around and then here again I want a little bit of color just there whoa maybe that's too much let's try that and I just want to soften that edge and to make it seem like it's um, uh, it's kind of receding um, I'm just going to add a little bit of gray for the shadows here Hmm. So, <coughs> with Chinese brush painting, what you do, you practice and practice and practice over many, many years, and then you're considered a master. And it's not so much about the paintings you produce, it's about learning about the, <coughs> the muscle memory of how to paint them and how your ink works. So again, I want to soften that edge a bit and soften that edge a bit. And embrace what the watercolour's doing. Eek! Why have I picked up paint's grey? I don't want paint's grey there. So I'm just going to soften that a bit and soften that a bit. 
And then I think I'm going to spray the middle. It's sort of dry, but let's see what happens. Whoa! Yuck! It <coughs> it's softened areas up and it's created some interesting shapes. So I'm just going in here and looking at the centre of my flower. I just want to intensify that colour a bit. And then again, here, I just want to soften that edge of that petal. And I'm just going to use water, followed by a tiny, tiny bit of Payne's Grey. Maybe that was too tiny. Just on the edge here, just have a little bit of shadow going on. And we want to soften that again. And then I've got these outer edges. I don't want too intense colour, which that is. I just want to have a bit of pink knocking around. And then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of paint grey. Yeah! Too much, too much, too much. I want that paint grey actually here. As if the light is falling on the petal. And with watercolours, I was going to say there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. They're generally just accidents. Try not to fiddle. So I just want to take that off. So I'm using a clean, dry brush to take that area off. <coughs> and then over here, whoa, that's too intense. So I'm going to dilute that just with water. And again, I want to that petal to define the petal below it, as it were. And then I'm going to pick up a tiny, tiny bit of Payne's Grey yeah, and pop it there. <coughs> it's looking a bit like a cabbage at the moment, but I suppose you can get cabbage roses, can't you? So here we are. So this is the lightest petals. <coughs> and I'm just going to add a little tiny Payne's Grey there to define that area um, and here I want a little tiny bit of this moving it around with the water on my brush and a little tiny bit of grey and up here <coughs> try and get rid of the splatter Obviously, in a more controlled situation, I wouldn't have splatter all over my painting, but it certainly adds something to it sometimes. As I told a friend of mine, as he bought one of my paintings, it's all part of the process. Ooh, right, okay, so I'm just going in here. Ah! And that's entirely too grey. So what I might do is just flood water on there <coughs> and have a bit of a blot around here where it's wet <coughs> and then I've got one more petal to do sort of here-ish so I want the colour in there and then the tiniest tiniest bit of paint's grey just here mm, too much too much and again <coughs> getting the idea of this rose and the depth of the colour in the centre. Now some of these lines are a bit harsh, so what I'm going to do is use my nice little bristly brush, which I think I introduced you to last time. I'm just going to soften these edges just by scrubbing to create a slightly softer edge. Or else we've got a hard edge here. There we go, it's disappearing into the paper have a bit of a soft edge. Now because this is quite a pale thing, <coughs> um, I need to define it by doing the background. So this is where all my lovely greens come in and I'm going to uh, perhaps have a the odd leaf. So I imagine if I have a kind of leaf over here, they're kind of serrated aren't they? And then maybe a leaf over here uh, and they are a bit serrated and maybe one here. Go on should always have three. And then I'm going to sort of mush around the background and define the rose actually by using the background. <coughs> I've just noticed that bit there which I don't like so I'm just going to go in a fiddle 
So I'm adding another wash of colour onto my uh, dry wash that's there. So but I wonder if that needs a little tiny bit of grey. Uh, just there, just to oomph it up a bit. Uh, <coughs> so, this will be a two-stage process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on <coughs> with a nice big brush a lot of something called green gold, which I like. It's got this nice zinginess to it. So I'm just going to go around here and actually catch the edge of the petals and pretty much paint all the background this colour. And then when it's dry, oops, that's a red water, and when it's dry I can then go in and define petals in the odd bush. There we go. So biggest brush. So when you're putting on a large area, area of wash, use your biggest brush. And it should have a reasonable point, so don't worry about being accurate. And I'm just going on here and putting this nice wash all over the entire thing. Pretty much like house painting. <coughs> and I say I'm going to do some creative cropping and chop that bit off. I think this is getting kind of intense, so I'm going to put a bit of sap green in here and you can see the difference in color and while things are still wet they will mush around happily together so, and then a bit more of the <coughs> nice green gold there we go and i think i want some of this perylene green which i like which is this very dark cool green i, think I want some up here I want this to be like an out-of-focus photograph. And you can see that's got a big intensity of tone, <coughs> which is always good, and it would have more if it was wetter. So I think I might leave it at that. Now I'm fiddling. Don't fiddle. And a bit going on here too. But what I'm going to do <coughs> is just spray this general area because <coughs> I want the edges of the petals to be softer. Oops. Ooh. Ooh. <coughs> and I'm just going to use a slightly different brush. To mush that around a bit. Mush, 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 mush. And I think I'm going to leave that at the moment, and this is a lot of wash, so I'm going to just dampen that off a bit. <coughs> uh, here. I'm just going to take that off because I know it's going to drip all over my carpet. So again, I'm putting this aside to dry, and we'll come back once it's dry, and then I can add some more wash move on to the lily. Um, they can be a bit complicated but if you think of uh, the lovely way the petals are marked that's always a big help. So I think, oh yeah, is that way up? Doesn't really matter. I will have it that way up, I think. Why not? And again I'm going to use a watercolour crayon just to get that structure right. So if I start at the centre then I want to come up to that petal there and then you can see, once you start looking at flowers, you can see how they're constructed. Um, so here, so we got that one. So they got a little whirl of three petals. So then we've got this big old petal over here and this one over here. And then within that, so we got these and these, which are the outer whirl of petals. So I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to try and catch the edge of what we uh, I need to be a bit more wiggly, and a bit more petal shaped. And come in there and look at what it's doing. So then we got that bit there and then this pe petal is doing something rather exciting. So it's further down and we're going to have a little wiggle and then it curls round quite a lot. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and then I'm just hitting this bigger petal over here which is sort of again wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's sort of going like that come out here, ah, come out here, 
and looking at what the center of the petal is doing. <coughs> and then here, we got this petal, which is slightly turned away from us, but let's not worry about that too much. And that is actually defined by the center stroke. And then we have this petal here, doing something very nice and petal-like. And then this little petal here, which is more or less there. And again, it's you'll be defining the edge of these by actually putting the background in. So that does look rather stunted. I'll make it curl a bit more. And then we have the stamens. What I'm going to do is actually mark them out with a yellow, am I really? Uh, a yellow thing. I might just put those there, just for my own information really. Oh look, it's got a green bit down the middle. So I can actually use the crayon to help. And I might put these on later with a, a yellowy, limey green mixed with gouache, because I don't want to be bothered thinking about those while I'm painting the petals. So let's start, I suppose if I was sensible I could mask them out, but I'm not sensible, so let's just keep going. Um, <clears throat> so here, the colour I'm going to use is, I think, this quinacridone magenta, which is a really zingy pink, as you can see. Again, these are these nice paints invented by Daniel Smith. Just He just wanted transparent paints, and I'm primarily going to use that. I might use some of the warmer quinacridone red, which is this colour, which again, I think the combination of the two will be just about right. So I'm just going to make a little bit of wash of them. So I'm just adding water to uh, the paint, so they will be a bit washy. There we go, we've got a nice wash going on. So let's start with this petal. So I'm going to go in here with my Chinese brush and follow that centre line of stripes. Whoa, here and here. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the uh, quinacridone red, and I'm just going to go around the edge here, and then it's all going to be done with water. Oops, let's have that nice and clean. So I'm just going to go in here and make that very wet. And again, oops, I probably want that to be like that. Yeah. And again, with lots of water. And I want to soften this edge a lot, so I'm going to use more water here. Whoa, so now it's fighting back. And I'm probably going to be reduced to using some kitchen towel just to control the water again. So I just want that to be a little bit softer, so I'm using kitchen towel to blot some of the harsher edges away. And again, using water to do that. Right, okay, and I'm liking what it does there, so I'm going to leave that and hope I can add more later. So that's that petal, and then I've got this rather dynamic petal making a dynamic shape. Um, and again, so I'm mixing up a lot of the quinacridone magenta, and I'm just coming in here and actually catching the edge of uh, the main mark, the bee's runway. And then with a little bit of the red, I'm going to soften that edge over here too. And again, that is too much, so I'm going to throw some water at it and hope it's going to do what I want, which is something water never really does. But I just want to get the basics of this petal. And then I can go back and add uh, those nice bee runway effect. I'm just going to soften that edge. So with a clean, dry brush, I'm just picking up a little bit of water around there. And again, I'm liking what's happening there, so I'm going to leave it. <coughs> and here comes the next petal, which I think I made too big, but never mind. Yes, I made it much too big, but never mind. So, a nice bit of that quinacridone here, and a little bit of the red around the edges just to warm that colour up. And again, I'm going to throw a lot of water at it, so I want to catch, make the water do the work for me. And over here. And I might slim it down a bit, except now I don't have enough quinacridone, never mind. 
So this is all, uh, watercolour is always about painting in an emergency. And the more you do, the more practised you'll be at dealing with the emergencies. So here, I do want that to be there, I think. And again, I'm just going to add, add some water here. And I really want a lot of water there. So back to the kitchen towel. Hmm. Uh, I want a little bit lighter just there, so while it's still damp, perhaps I can persuade it to be a bit lighter. And <coughs> okay, next petal. So this one here. So again, a nice strong bit of quinacridone to catch the centre of the flower. Whoa! And over here, I need my mid that little bit of red, just to warm that pink up a bit. And it actually catches the edge of the flower just here. So if I go like that, it's just got the very edge of the petal. And again, I want a bit more oomph down the middle here. And I'm going over here. Soften that edge. I think I'm throwing, going to throw a puddle of water at it and see what happens. Ooh. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> so then I've got this this ear petal here. Again, a good strong wash of the quinacridone magenta. Follow that bee runway. A little bit of the magenta as well to oomph up, to warm up the pink, and then I want to just put water on and hope it does the work for me. I hope it's not too much like a Shirley Trevina. She'll send the boys round. Right. And again, I want to soften that edge with water. And, ooh. And then the last petal, this little one here, I'm going to try and follow what that does because it starts here and then it goes like that. So it's sort of looking at almost the growth pattern of uh, the flower you're dealing with and using it to your advantage. In Chinese brush painting, you paint from where the thing grows. You don't start at the top. So you, uh, <coughs> you're following its chi, I think is the theory. And again, I just want to wet this a lot to show that's going around the corner and over here too. Ooh. That's doing all sorts of nice things, but I think I want a little bit more definition for the center. Ooh. And I think I'm going to leave these bits to dry. I'm going to add the spots and maybe a few more of the uh, B runway lines in there. I'm just softening up some edges and fiddling, as you notice. So because this is mainly white, it's going to be defined by the background. So I'm going to go through the same process I did with the, uh, the rose, because um, the photograph is kind of out of focus. And so I'm going to vary my blues, I mean my greens, up there and maybe add some darker ones and maybe even give it a stalk who knows but what I'm doing I'm just enjoying uh, this lily for what it is um, just really enjoying the colors and its shapes rather than thinking I'm painting a botanical painting <clears throat> so here I'm going to start with my green gold mix up a good wash of that um, let's have a bit of more green gold going on and I just want to add some water to my perylene green the way I hope it might buck up. And I've got a sap green over here. So maybe I'll start with that as it's on my brush at the moment. And I think I want to make this petal a little bit smaller so I can actually go in there. Ooh, it's got a round end. And go in there. Whoa, and then this is here. 
and because I'm using a nice big brush hopefully the wash won't dry so let's have a bit more sap green going on here and oh let's have some green gold as I've got it mixed up so I just want to make sure I put this wash on while it's all still wet otherwise I'll get streaky lines can you see so this is all wet but it's drying a bit over there and then I can define shapes within that once it's dry so here we go let's have a bit more sap green up here to define that Oops, got a lump in there. So, and often with watercolours, if you can kind of divide the background into cells, that's quite useful. So this was a cell. Ah, so far from that, that's drying. And this is a little cell. So sometimes with watercolours, you absolutely have to paint like the clappers because everything is drying on you. So I could call that a cell. What I'm going to do is pick up some of that dark perylene green Ooh. and blend that in and just making sure it's all still wet I want that shape to be a bit more lily petal shaped and I'm going over here pick up some sap green and while it's still wet again so sort of painting the outline and then painting the center with watercolor uh, and then here, that's still wet, that is just about still wet, so I can go in here and I'm just put using whatever's on my brush at the moment because I just want to get that on. So again I'm going to pick up my green gold and float some of that on there. Ah, bugger. So I just want to come down here. there maybe get some more sap green doing backgrounds in watercolors is always very difficult if you want to uh, figure it out I would suggest you look up Shirley Trevino she's very big in America now and she's got several videos on her backgrounds and what she does she again divides it up into cells and doesn't make it conventional which I think is uh, why she's her work is so appealing but I think for me, see, I'm fiddling with it and I've disturbed the pigment underneath. So I'm just going to leave that like that and come back to it in a minute. And one way of telling if this is dry, oh, I don't know, that is almost dry. So you could, if you touch the paper and it's cool to the touch, it's still a little damp, but I think I can probably get away with it. So I think I'll keep going with me, Lily, and, and actually try and put a few more details in. So I'm mixing up a, a wash of the Quinacridone Red and Magenta to get this really nice pink. Ooh, isn't that lovely? And then <coughs> with my little Chinese brush, I'm going to be brave and I'm just going to try and put my B lines in like that. Except they're not like that. So I'm going to throw a little bit of water at this so they join up. lot that away so I just want that little bit more intensity there and maybe I'll take it out there and actually because I've now um, added the green uh, these washes don't qu look quite so punchy as they did so I'm just going to add a little bit of more wash around there and soften that edge with water Ooh, I kind of like that Except I do want a little bit more pink up there softening that edge with water and softening this edge with water just to get that oomph and I'm going to have to wait to put my uh, little bits on so by the time I finished all the petals maybe that one will be dry so again using my wash of quinacridone red and magenta let's have a look at what this one's up to so that actually goes quite like that so it's got this deep intense colour in there and I'm trying to achieve that and the shape as well. So let's soften that edge and make it follow the petal. 
And with watercolour, once you put two or three layers of it on, it starts kind of dying. So uh, try and keep uh, the layers to about two or three. The more layers you have, the duller the painting will seem. Uh, watercolours have got this nice quality. The light passes through the pigment onto the paper and you get the glow of the white paper. So uh, the more layers you put between the light and the paper, uh, the duller it will seem. So best not fiddle with the watercolour. Uh, so here we are. I'm going to attack another petal now. Oh, that's my first petal, which I got some nice effects there. So again, trying to look at what these lines are doing. And it does describe the form. And I just realised that that needs softening. And here again, I'm just going to go over this with water and soften that edge. So I think I might leave that there. I'll worry about the middle in a minute. Okay, so now I've got this nice petal. Whoa! And again, using the brush to describe the form. Ah! Entirely too much. It's a trouble with talking and painting. They take half place in different halves of the brain. And again, so I got a nice bright colour there. So I'm going to leave that, I think, I think. Maybe a little bit more intense for the middle. Whoa! Yes, leave, leave, leave. <coughs> oh dear, I'm getting splats all over this. Hang on a minute. And generally, you can erase things with watercolour while it's wet. And then, here we go again, so magenta and red. I'm just looking at this, and this is kind of there. So I want that softened edge up there. And I'm going to leave that as well. And again, so I've got this little one here. So magenta and red again. I want to follow the form, which is kind of going like that. And that goes there. Yeah. And that sort of goes there. So we're getting this nice, intense colour. I think this is a big help using tubes. Um, they can be expensive, but they do pack a good punch. I'm just looking at this. This is the one I first started with, and it's all gone pale. And watercolours will dry paler than you think they are. So I just want to put a few more lines in. Look, I'm fiddling. So that's my third layer. And I'm going to leave that. Leave it, leave it, leave it. And then I want to look at my little bits, little dots that are all part of the bees runway. And for that I'm going to use a little bit of Elysian Crimson, a tiny bit of Payne's Grey. Whoa, that's entirely too much Payne's Grey. Uh, Oh, I wonder if that colour will do. So this is Elysian Crimson, and I'm going to use this little brush, and I'm going to look at these dots. And I'm trying to get a good point on my brush. There. And also, they also sort of define the petal and what the petal is up to. Eek, eek, eek. I'm going to go a bit crazy. I'm going to give it a tiny spray. Ah, oh, that's better. So then I just have to repeat the process around here. Woo! Let's have and a few over here. And that is still a little bit wet. And over here. I don't want to do a botanical drawing, but I do want to have my nice lily spots, as it were. And I'm just going to give that a little spray. Mm. And then over here, there's a few. Over here. And to get a good point of my brush, I'm rolling it on my palette. Because it's wet, it probably doesn't be spraying, and I know this is wet. I can see it wet. 
being all glossy at me. Whoa! Now I'm thinking about it too much. And then we've got a few little spots in here. <coughs> so there we have a lily. Um, and then I can actually define some of the petals or leaves or stalks by actually putting on something darker. So again, I'm going to use my big brush. I'm going to mix up. This is the perylene green. And yeah, so I'm going to give it a stalk, I think. So it's probably not there. So I'm just going to go in here. think about making that a stalk. So if I make that a stalk, I should have a leaf, which I've forgotten to put in. Uh, I'll make that go that way. And so I'm just going to wet this so it creates a smooth edge, but I don't want to go crazy because I know it's going to uh, affect the wash underneath. So I'm just going in here, tidying up. And we could call that a little cell, and I'm just going to leave that. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to throw some more perylene green in it, just here. So we get this kind of smushy, out-of-focus look. I think I want some down there. And then, hmm, I'm then I need to do the other end of the stalk, or the other side of the stalk. So again, I can actually make that make the background the object so with watercolors you have to paint in reverse sometimes and I should have put some leaves in so if I put a sort of leaf type shape there I call that a leaf it doesn't really look much like a lily leaf but never mind let's just keep going and again this nice dark dark green I wonder if I could make two little leaves there Maybe I should have planned this out. And you can see by putting this nice darker background in, it's really making the lily pop. So I think I want some more of that. So go in here and have a big old smoosh around. Whoa! And I don't want to do too much because I know that it will start disturbing the uh, the paint underneath and over here so I've got some nice dark here so I'm trying to make the lily pop out of the page um, and then I'm going to put some sap green on top of that whoops 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 and then maybe I could show you what yellow does actually because that can be really fun so this is cadmium yellow and again, it's an opaque colour, and what it does, it pushes the pigment away. So you can get some really nice effects with that. Yeah, so now I'm fiddling. Let's get a bit more of that yellow up. Why not? Uh, where can I pop it in? Over here, so you can see. I've got a gooier version somewhere. Oh, here we are. I've got this gooey version, and you can see it actually pushes away pigment. And then I think a little bit more sap green down here. <coughs> and there we go. So we've got some interesting things happening here. And I'm going to let the water do the work, I think, rather than me. So there we have a lily. Um, <coughs> with the um, stamens, I'm going to have to wait uh, to do those because this area is still wet. So I will come back to that in a minute. Uh, <coughs> so I'm going to have to wait for that to dry. Meanwhile, and here we are. I'm just going to try and finish off this rose. I had to leave it to dry before I could actually define the leaves. So I'm going to go in and actually define the leaves in reverse. So here we are. I've got some vague leaf shapes here. And I'm just going to use a dark colour to uh, pick the leaves out. I'm going to spray it a little bit. Uh, because I want kind of soft edges around the rose and around the leaves. 
and then I'm just going to pick up a nice big brush and mix up my perylene green which is here and probably a bit of sap green which is here and I'm going to go in and define the leaves and with watercolor you tend to define lighter shapes by the dark around them so I'm just going to go in here I don't want to go crazy now and they do have a bit of serration but I don't think I've got time for that and I'm just going to give it another spray um, <coughs> here we go that's my nice sap green but I don't want to put too much on so I'm going to blend it into the background here up here just with water and I'm being quite delicate the way I'm applying the brush because it will disturb the paint underneath and I think that I want that to be a little bit softer and then down here I'm going to, oops going to define this oops I've gone over me leaf damn so this is why it's useful to make marks just to know what you're doing so that leaf's going to be in a little bit of shadow and over here oops here we go and define that leaf actually that's worked quite well I think like a happy accident so I'm just going to go in there maybe make that a little bit darker give it a tiny bit of sap green because it's a bit on the yellow side the trouble is uh, judging color and watercolor when you're painting on white it always seems quite dark but when then you start putting other tones next to it it will seem uh, a bit too light even and try and think about a few little serrations actually that's worked best <laughs> so I'm just going to keep it simples and just to find this leaf up here I'm just using sap green here because I don't want it to be too dark and then I'm just going to join those areas of wet wash together I think we might call that finish. It's not the best rose I've ever done, but you get the idea of just enjoying how the flowers work. I feel if I fiddle with this, I'm going to make it worse, so I'm going to leave it at the moment. Except I can't stop fiddling. Just going to go in there, soften that edge. So having these soft edges, it makes <coughs> the thing look more interesting somehow. So if I soften that edge there, maybe. And we'll call that finished. Oh, no, no, we won't. Let's have a serrated edge. And you get this kind of mushiness which works very well. I'm just going to soften that edge too. Okay, so we'll call that rose finished. And now I'm going to try and finish my lily. And if you may remember, I forgot to put the stamens on. So here's my picture of the lily. And rather than using gouache, because it's a bit tedious and my gouache is rubbish, I'm going to use pastels. And pastels are quite a good get-out clause when you're... Uh, painting in watercolour. I've just got this little area of the stamens and they all add to the joy of the lily really. So I'm going to pick up, I don't know, I've got a yellow here. I think I might go for the yellow. And I'm just going to go in and put my stamens on like that. And pastels are useful because they are opaque. Uh, and, and then we got the, is it the anther? says she who did biology and can't remember what it's called so you've got the male part of the plants with the pollen on and this is the female part of the pollen uh, plant with the little bit at the end for receiving the pollen and I'm just going to use a little bit of orange no, orange and I think a kind of burnt sienna color to indicate the anthers and what they're doing but that it's a little bit dark. It's the right colour, but a bit dark. So I'm going to add a bit of orange on there to give them a more three-dimensional feel. And again, this is not the best lily I've ever done, but you get the idea that you do have a get-out clause to go mix media. You do not have to just stick with watercolour because it will drive you crazy. Uh, so I will call that finished. And... Um, I'm going to go on to the poppy now. Um, 
poppy, 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 which work quite well. I don't know if you can see, I've got this, I put salt on there. We did salt in the experimental one. And I think that's worked really well for the inside of the poppy. And the paper got a little bit crinkly uh, due to the very wet and wet thing. So it's a little bit bent. It was much bent, er more bent earlier. And uh, just a useful tip, if you need to flatten something, you can see it is a bit uh, <coughs> curled up, is that you just spray the back quite liberally. And this is going to make it crinkle up even more, which perhaps I should have shown you the other thing first. And you can see, so it's crinkled up. And then what you do, you kind of rush away and put it under the Encyclopedia Britannica. And then that will dry flat. But I did want to show you something, which I should have done before. It's something called creative cropping. So I've got, I really like the center of this poppy. So what you can do is that you have two L-shaped pieces of card. And you can just move them around to see where your composition works best. I think that's rather good, actually. I might frame that. Um, so you can see what works best. And I'm do it on the lily and the rose too. So you can you can actually change your composition by chopping bits off. And this is a very useful tool. You see now that's really Georgia O'Keeffe, isn't it? Um, <coughs> so that's quite a useful thing to do. Um, and I'll just show you on the lily and the rose as well, because that works well. I shall put that under the Encyclopedia Botanica in a minute. So here I've got the lily. It's kind of messy around the edges. And I'm going to see what works best here. Uh, so here we go. Ooh, ooh. So you can see how the composition varies. Yes. So something like that. So that works quite well. It's got this nice explosion feel to it. And s this is slightly off center as well. The center of the flower is slightly off center. You don't want things right in the middle because that makes it dull. So just have it slightly off center. And then let's try that rose, although that is still a bit damp. Uh, was it that way up? Yes, it was. So again, I could go in with the rose and define the edges of my frame, which I prefer like that, I think. Yeah, like that. So try creative cropping, try wet in wet, and just paint for the enjoyment of painting. So that's the end of this week's video, and possibly see you in two weeks.